Welcome to this session on creating a B-spline surface. So in this session, we're going to create a curved surface, again, with kind of a complement arc here that will enclose an atrium on the concave side of our building. So again, we're going to do this in much the same way. We're going to start with some basic arcs. We're going to use our T value to control the endpoints. And then we're going to loft those arcs and create the surface. So I'm going to use the three nodes we created for the canopy, the two coordinate systems and the arc. And I'm going to copy and paste those nodes. And instead of canopy, I'm going to name that atrium CS1 and atrium CS2. And this time, rather than only creating those coordinate systems on the first arc, we're going to go ahead and let it create on the entire list of arcs. So we'll just take the zero indexing off of there. And we also might want to inset this surface a little. So we might adjust that T value instead of zero. Could make it 0.1. And if I want the reciprocal on the other end, then we would make that 0.9 or 1 minus 0.1. And you can see now we have a series of arcs here. And I'm going to rename that arc as arc atrium. Now in this case, rather than having to come to this node and, and adjust that T value to change the location of this surface we're going to create, perhaps that's another good use for a slider. So I'm going to go over to my node types and I'm going to place a slider node on the graph. And I'm just going to call this slider node T value. We'll double click on it there. Now remember, T values always have to fall between 0 and 1. So that kind of tells us our minimum value needs to be 0 and our maximum would need to be 1. However, we're going to use this T value for both ends of the arc, which means we would never want it to go past the midpoint. In other words, our start point does not want to go past that midpoint. So it really means that the maximum value on our slider would be 0.5. I might put our start value at 0.1. Now our resolution obviously has to be relatively small since we're working with such a small range of numbers. We could snap to the ticks and give that the same increment. And now all we have to do is link that T value back to the T values for each of our coordinate systems. So first to the atrium CS1, and then also we'll link it to the atrium CS2. However, we can't have the same T value in, on the second one. It needs to be 1 minus that, so that we basically get the complement. So now you actually have a slider that you can use to adjust those arcs that are going to create the surface. So let's go ahead and record those transactions and now we'll add the surface. So let's go up to the node types and we're going to use a B-spline surface. I'm going to drag and drop that onto my graph. And I'm going to name this as the surface atrium. And we're going to use a technique which is loft curves. And that just simply takes a list of curves and lofts them to create a surface. So all we need to do so all we need to do is connect it to the list of curves, which would be our arc atrium here. And we have that surface. Now, I'm going to go ahead and double click on this node. We can add a few properties 
to that surface. So for instance, we could put family and part information on it. So again, I might want to use my curtain wall glazing part. And it would pick up the attributes of that glazing. We also have that general tab. And I might want to do something like add some transparency to it. So I could put in a transparency of, for instance, 0.3. So it begins to look a little like glass. And then we'll go ahead and record that transaction. Now that we have that, that surface that's defining some sort of atrium, it might be that we would like to use that to trim our slab. In other words, perhaps what we really want here is a hole in the slab that would go down to the lobby. So what we can do is we're going to put another slab node on the graph. I'm just going to put this over here with the, the original canopy slab. And we'll call this slab canopy 2. And to create this slab, we're actually just going to use a cut. So just as you would do in building designer, if you wanted to put a hole in a slab, you would use the, the cut solid tool. We're going to make our cut technique a cut. So we simply link that to the slab to cut, which is our original slab canopy. Our cutting profile is going to be our arc atrium. Again, we don't need all the arcs, just that first one. So we'll use the, the zero indexing again. For our cut direction, I'm just setting it to both. Our cut mode will be through. And there we can see we've, we've cut that atrium in the slab. So I'm going to go ahead and record that transaction. But of course, you might say, well, I need a, to rotate this around. I'm going to need some kind of enclosure for my lobby. So we could also use a wall node and just create a curved wall that follows that same arc. So I'm going to drag and drop a wall node here. We'll call this wall lobby. And we'll do a by curve as our method there. And we can select a catalog item. So again, I'll select the wall catalog type. I'm just going to use a, a standard wall assembly. And I'm just going to select a brick wall. At this point, we can always change that, of course, as we go along. Now the curve I want is, is that arc there but I need it to be down here on the lobby level where I want to place the wall. So I'm actually going to create another curve here. And we can do that by simply projecting our arc down to the ground floor plane. So I'm going to call this curve wall. And we're going to use project curve onto a plane. So again, our curve will be our arc atrium. And again, I'm using the zero indexing to get just the first curve there. And our plane, we could use our ground floor plane. Uh, we, in this case, we could even use the base cs.xy plane. And you can see now we've got a curve down there. It matches the curve of our atrium. And I'll use that curve and link it back to the wall. Now the wall does need a tolerance. I'm going to use 0.01 here since it's a curved wall. We have the choice of offset types, left, center, or right. I'm going to use left. Now for the top, we could define a height. We have different options here on how we define the height. It could just be a fixed value. On the other hand, since we have so many variables in this model and we might be changing floor to floor heights and so forth, I might want to use the connect shapes. I could actually just have it go up to that slab and wherever that slab is, it'll be connected. So I just need to select the form or shape to connect to and I'm going to link that back to my canopy. 
slab canopy. And we can see we've got a brick wall created down there with our glass atrium above it. Now again, because these are building elements, I am going to turn on the deferred dynamics. And now we have a number of things linked together that are associated with each other. So we're going to have an arc that is controlling this atrium here, but it's also controlling then the opening in the canopy and the wall below as well. Let me just rotate this up so we can see everything. And we'll go and make some adjustments to that T value. So we'll see as we make that T value larger, it pulls those points together and reduces our atrium. So we get a smaller atrium, the wall encloses around the lobby, and the canopy becomes larger. We can also, on these building nodes, come in and go so far as to do a deferred update, which means those changes won't update until we've actually forced an update on the model. And again, that's just in the interest of keeping things moving quickly, and then we can do the update when needed. I'm going to go ahead and go over to my transactions and record that last transaction. So we've created really just an arc surface for the facade. What we're going to do in the next session is use a law curve to change the edges and put a curve on the edges here, creating a double curved surface. And then we'll begin to work with that. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.